animal come on out of an intro but i have built for another animal from the new arid animal pack for planet zoo so today we're building for the porcupines and i'm so excited because porcupines are so cute i was so excited that they're coming to the to the game and they're really really cute in the game as well um but we're obviously gonna look at them in the real time part after the speed build is done so we are in a moroccan zoo so it is a desert zoo inspired by moroccan architecture but this one doesn't have that much i want to say that much morocco to it because my original idea was kind of to build like a query um, um, and I hope I'm saying that word right, because uh, I, I mean the place where you get stones from, you know? Um, so I hope that I'm saying that word right. But uh, yeah, so that is a very rocky, stony kind of exhibit, but we are not really doing anything, I, I wanna say like really query related. I wouldn't think that you would look at this and think of a query necessarily, because to be honest, I've just never been to one. It just seemed like a cool idea, but I, then I was like, okay, What's an aquarium? So I, I kind of thought maybe we will add like a mine cart. So it could be like a mine sort of theme that we can add to it. But it also doesn't really make that much sense. So um, I feel like I, you know, I left that out and that's fine. Um, but it still has this like rocky tones, which I think is really cool. It is very gigantic. They kind of look a bit lost in there. So I'm thinking maybe down the line somewhere we might change this exhibit. Uh, into a striped hyena one and build a new one for the porcupines but for now this is the porcupines and another thing I wanted to mention is that to the side there you saw me build a build <laughs> yeah um, out of uh, or kind of start a build out of these pieces from the Africa pack um, like you see them right now and um, this build I'm not finishing because I don't know what's gonna be on the other side um, but I just love the way that these things looked when I placed them there because the shadows of these like archways cost it, it like it costs a really nice shadow it's a really cool shape of shadow so I really wanted to keep them there so I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it um, but it's definitely going to be sort of a different viewpoint for the porcupines and then probably also something on the other side but the something on the other side doesn't exist um, and this the placement of this is kind of kind of hard I hope that it can stay in this place and I won't have to move this entire thing which could very well happen because usually I like to kind of um, build my zoos out from a specific point and then add to that um, but this is kind of moved sort of further out because I, you know, I kind of felt like the, the good youtube -y thing would be to build for the arid pack animals um, and then otherwise I probably wouldn't have done it like this, like I would have taken my time until I got into this, but I really wanted to build for the porcupine um, and uh, I, for some reason, I felt like a query was it. <laughs> um, this is a relatively quick video, which really surprised me because I did I, it didn't feel that quick to build, to be honest. Not that it felt like really long, but it also didn't feel like a quick build that it was going to come out to 10 minutes. I mean, I did count out some stuff, obviously, I always do, but um, I still didn't think that it was going to be that slow, not slow, not um, that quick of a video, but I really like it, so I'm not complaining. Um, we are building a little bit of a shade thing there. They're also getting, uh, they have a little bit of a cave there and I also placed the, the caves that come with the game that smaller animals can go into. Um, and so they have, a, a, have multiple places where they could sleep and relax and escape the sun. But uh, I just, I also wanted to have a little bit of a build and I'm kind of thinking maybe I'm building some like, I, like, I wanna say like faux houses that kind of looks like a, like a deserty town up there, but that is really dependent on what's gonna be on the other side. I'm gonna say this a lot today because like I said, I didn't really add on to a, a specific place in the zoo. This is kind of out there in the desert. Um, and so we will really have to see what's on each side of everything. But I do like this exhibit still. I think I, I really enjoy the colors of this. Um, even though it's not as colorful as the donkey one was where it was very like blue and yellow and this is more in like desert tones but it still has uh, a blue fence that we're gonna build later and I still think that it it does you know bring some some colors that I don't usually use much so you know it's still it's still something new I guess <laughs> um, and yeah you see me struggling around what to do with these walls my problem here was that I felt like 
I felt like you couldn't really see the archways because there was because the wall in the back has the same color as the archways but I also didn't want to change just like one wall it also felt weird um, and I don't think I really actually fixed that <laughs> in the end I did put in tiles which looked a bit better um, but I yeah I mean I also like it the way that it is now in the video so I could have just probably stayed like that but you know now it's tiling in the end and then we're hiding this little forging place thing which is my favorite thing to do I don't like the the border around it but as you all know I really really love the mud pit and the mud pit has the same little border thing around so I always cover it up with these like flat stones like the natural flat stones um to because most animals can walk over it especially the DLC the animals they have a really good traversable area now so they usually be are able to you know cross it perfectly so I like to just cover up the the border around it because I just don't think it looks that pretty <laughs> um, and you know obviously when you are uh, building in a more lush environment you can also cover it up with like grass you know um, and do it like this and for this I only use the dry grass which still I think makes things look so much more um, realistic and you can see me kind of placing the grass in sort of all of the little, like I want to say like nooks between between like rocks or plants and like to me that's always where where, where it feels the best to have grass not necessarily because that is where it would only grow act in like in real life but for the game and for you know how your eyes work to kind of break off the big things and have them have a more like smooth integration into the landscape is really good to have the grass kind of cover the little nooks around it so that is something that I really really like to do and um, yeah, the other stuff is just very much rock placing. This is rock placing 101. I um, placed so many rocks and now you saw a little bit of a cut. Now we're going over to building this fence. And this is kind of a process because I honestly <laughs> completely changed my concept while I was building, but I still left all of it in because it was kind of like one of those things where one thing led to a new idea and you know we went over and I think at this point you probably all know this trick but in case you don't um, place one of your staff just like right next to it when you're building a fence so this way you know how tall the fence has to be because a lot of times when you don't do that the fence will either be too high or too low and so this is a good way to do that and you can also see me figure out later that I still felt like this was too short of a fence because it only goes to sort of to the knees of the keeper and you kind of want to aim for at least the hip um, so somewhere between the hip and the chest is always a good height which or like a realistic height obviously you can put whatever you want but realistically you know fences are sort of between hip and height hip and chest height um, because you still want to be able to look over them but you also don't want someone to fall over it and you know you have to have a certain height so that people can fall over it or easily step over it you know that's also a thing um but now it's kind of getting to the point where it kind of looks the way that it's going to look in the end and this is where you see me realize that i didn't like the the act the stone that was there because it felt too uh, too broken i guess and i always i feel like because we have this very very fancy entrance and the very fancy built for the donkeys it felt weird to have a sort of very uh very aged and weathered fence so i wanted a fancy fence that sounds funny and um so i was kind of trying around some stuff here all of this looked too old for me and i and, and i didn't quite like it but i think in the end we turn out to find a very very uh a good version of this like a good way to do it and I think er any second now I should also make it higher probably yeah that was there and now I realize I don't want this pole and I'm just trying to make it higher a bit I think I just I'll just make it higher later on there's there's no other thing added really <laughs> um but yeah so this is kind of a, a real big process for me each time I'm really really bad at building fences and so you see me end up basically with something entirely different that is a very uh, much more simple design than it was in the beginning like the thing I was going for was very different to this but I think that this fits the 
overall theme of the park that we had so far much more just because it it, it feels more you know more um more expensive in a way but also like not as old because all of the things that we put in are not necessarily not old but they are very well taken care of so like an overgrown little moss stone situation wouldn't just it just wouldn't really fit it um and oh my god i talked too long well the video is over um yeah okay well let's just start the real time part i guess all right, so after that lovely black screen, because I kept talking for too long, I want to show you the porcupines. They just arrived, so there's some keepers running around looking at them, and let's get a little bit of an overview of this exhibit. We're going to talk about this building in just a second, but until then, let's actually walk from the visitor's perspective. And I'm so confused with the new camera options. I always click the wrong one. Um, so... From here, I obviously don't know what's going to be here, so let's start here. So uh, I decided not to really cover up the gate. I kind of made some pretty posts next to it and then put a staff only sign here. I don't think this is too bad. Um, I think that's actually quite realistic. Sometimes you see that in zoos. Um, so we have this lovely little pattern on this blue fence, which I think is really nice. It adds a really nice pop of color to this exhibit that is not that colorful in and of itself. Oh my god, there's such a huge family of porcupines walking around. I think there's one too many in here. Um, they're supposed to be in groups of six, so I doubt that all of them are up here um, right now. <laughs> it's so cute! Is that a new animation that they follow each other? Uh, I don't know. So they have a lot of, like... Um, deserty plants here so it's definitely a bit more green than the rest it is so far um but i quite like this i think that it kind of gives a little bit more detail to the build that is otherwise you know because it's really small animal so it kind of needs some you know diverse city to look at because the animals might not catch your attention right away um and i think there's no one over here really Oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to see them use the foraging box. I'm not sure they can, though, but uh, I'll figure that out. Um, there's some cacti in the back there, and we'll obviously kind of... Or not obviously, but maybe we're going to work our way with all of these rocks. I don't want to overdo it, because that's also like a piece count kind of thing. But uh, depending on what is going to be up there, you know, we might or we might not. Um, and that is kind of all that you see from here. I quite like that... It's it goes up here. Like I think that's a very cute, cool view that you don't have that often. Like see a cliff from the side, basically. Um, we're gonna look at the porcupines from inside in a second, but I actually wanted to look at this together with you. I am not quite sure what to do with it, like I said. So uh, I have no idea what I'm gonna add here, but I kind of liked just the shape of this here. So there will be some way place shape or form that you're gonna get up there and be able to look at the porcupines from up here so i didn't really you know do anything with it because i don't know what is going to happen up here yet but i quite like this i also like that you can see this like curve in the barrier um and, oh, kind of went flying oh i forgot that i'm not in the the camera mode uh the visitor mode yet so this is kind of a cool view that you have kind of framed by this shape and it's oh really like it so i think that has potential i just don't know what it has potential for yet <laughs> so um we can actually also ooh, i didn't mean to do that so we can actually also tour this here just so that you can get another look at the cute little porcupines i think they're so adorable um and yeah so you might not have seen them in your game yet maybe you've built for the other animals first or you're waiting to get the game on sale or you're still undecided if you even want it so Look at those, they're so adorable. I really, really also like them in real life. I'm not sure I've ever actually seen the African crested porcupine. I think I've seen other porcupines to be honest, but I could be wrong. So the sun is really not our friend here. Um, they're so, they're really adorable. Um, I think that kind of their, their spikes kind of look a bit, uh, like they puff it up so often. I feel like that's not really what porcupines do all that much. 
Um, or maybe I just always see very relaxed porcupines when I'm in the zoo. But um, still so adorable. These the 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 spikes. I think they have another name, but I I. I, I could know it in I would know it in German wouldn't know it in English so um but the so I'm just gonna call them spikes but they are so so pretty and funny enough and this is actually the fact that I'm gonna end on in German like when you translate it word by word you know how Germans love uh words that are pieced together out of two different words the name for porcupine is spike pig and I just I think that's such a funny name um uh, but the the best name, the best German name ever is the one for the sloth because a sloth is just called lazy animal in German. Um, and yeah, I'm sure that I've said that in the sloth video before. But anyway, I think that is a stupid enough fact to end on. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you're excited to see how the Moroccan Zoo is going to continue. We're also going to ba be back to continuing our other zoos um in next week because we will have the final uh, the final theme revealed for the theme park and then the next one will probably be the anniversary build and then after that there's no more one off stuff there's just you know progress <laughs> in our builds but so far thank you so much for watching i hope to see you for all of that and for more so thank you bye